day, for the first time with the LSO, our composer, Stas Namin. Oh. Nice to meet you. Uh, it's a big honor for me to work with the best musicians in the world. I, I wrote this piece trying to express my understanding of the philosophy of the fate of the life of human being. Dissonance of the whole thing is a very important, not only melody and tune, but dissonance is the idea of strange phenomena that human beings don't have a collective brain, only individual. So individual, they Einstein and any genius, but as a collective brain, they're ruining themselves. And they're killing themselves, and it's like apocalypsis, which is at the end of the symphony. And dissonance is, which is inside everybody, which gives that strange final of the life. So it's a circle, from my point of view. And life with love, with war, with everything, what we have in our life, comes to apocalypses, and after that, life comes again. And if you see at the end of the symphony, the last page is that life is appearing and goes to dissonance again, because it's a circle, and it will be repeating again and again. And the name of the symphony, Centuria is Quark, because Centuria is like prediction of Nostradamus, he called it Centuria, and S. Quark is a strange quark. Quark is the smallest material element found by human being. And so it's a prediction of the strange material world. So I'm sorry for such a question. Thank you very much. The piece that we've been recording here today is a new symphony by Stas Namin. It is called Centuria as Quark. We had several meetings with Stephen Hawking. And after that, I started my crazy interest to the, the other world. This piece has got lots of semitone dissonance, um, lots of people who are fighting against one another um, for supremacy of, and, it, and it jars against the ear and it's all intended to, to unsettle the listener. Um, and Stas was saying that that's got a lot to do with him trying to explore the human condition. The dissonance is internal anguish within, within us as people that builds to this enormous apocalypse at the end. And it seems really effective that he's achieving that with the music really effectively. We're really enjoying it. First of all, the conductor. He is so professional, so sensitive. And he's very efficient, you know, we have all the notes in front of us. Sometimes there's a few mistakes here and there, but actually he, he's got good ears, he can pick up what's wrong, what's needed. And then in the box, there's a composer and the producer and the engineers and everybody working together. It's sort of like lots of pairs of ears listening for when things go wrong, which is actually very infrequently. Everybody chips in and we, and we get the job done. He contacted us about a month ago, and we were in contact several times a week discussing different pieces of the symphony. So he went into this very seriously and deeply. 
And uh, now when we came here, I couldn't imagine that he's a young guy and handsome. <laughs> but he's a great musician, like on top, top, top level. spent a long time sort of getting to know this music and to work out what it is that I'm trying to say in the performance of it. As those ideas kind of crystallize, then Jonathan can say, okay, so this isn't working, this is how it lands on the microphones, we need to just change this and that a little bit. So between us, we kind of arrive at something that works for them and works for us and the players, and we take that forwards and, and polish that. Jonathan, from my point of view, is not just sound engineer, he's for sure producer. He's very, serious musician. We're all musicians ourselves. We grew up learning instruments and we read scores. And on these sort of sessions, we do t tend to help with the music side as well, sorting out notes, making sure takes are covered, offering ideas. We're there just to help realize exactly what they are here to achieve. My mother was a classical musician. First rock and roll influence you know, took me. But then, about maybe 15 years ago, I started again, and that was a suite, then several more pieces, and then decided to write a symphony. Everybody knows that London Symphony Orchestra is one of the best, even maybe the best in the world. They actually, from the first take, doing great music. And if they're doing two or three takes, the third is magnificent. We're very lucky that um, we have an extraordinary pool of musicians in London. When you couple that standard of musicianship with an acoustic, with the microphones, with the experience of putting together those projects, we have something that we all think is something very special. And it's always terrific and very positive thing that people want to use that combination and appreciate the standard of that camp combination for making other people's music come alive. The orchestra are all here bringing a huge amount of expertise to the table, and so you don't need to do too much. They, they're all experts at what they do as well. So all you're doing is just channeling that into one vision. 